I'm Molly Jane, head of news at Cointelegraph, and we have the great pleasure of talking today to Bitcoin himself. Oh, hi, Molly. <laughs> hi. Oh. Thanks for having me on the show. I apologize. I'm a little nervous. Uh, sometimes I get nervous talking to girls and all. It's totally fine. I guess my first question for those that have been seeing you on Bitcoin and Friends is how is the search for your father going right now? Well, I can't give away too much, Molly. As the producers of the show said, I'm not allowed to give away big spoilers. Uh, but what I can tell you is uh, I'm going to have a hard time in the show finding my dad through traditional sleuthing methods. Uh, finding Satoshi won't be easy, and sometimes to find the answers, you know, we must do some soul searching, or in my case, code searching. That's just a little hint. So we've found several people that could be your father, but who do you think is the best fit? Well, uh, to be perfectly honest, Molly, uh, despite my uh, desperate search for my dad in the show, I'm a little more stable emotionally, in real life, of course. And I hope that the true identity of my dad is, is actually never revealed. I think considering the nature of cryptocurrencies and it being decentralized and all, an anonymous team of creators is just more poetic and fitting. So, yeah. So, my next question is, as Bitcoin's price changes, as it does every day, do you feel stronger when that happens, personally? Well, Molly, price doesn't necessarily make me stronger. What price does, if it gets really high, is give me a big head. Poor thing. Sometimes when I sit around thinking about how much people are willing to pay for my puke, I start getting cocky, you know, since I'm only 10 years old, of course. And when the price goes down, it's easy for me to get sad. I try not to let it get to me, uh, but sometimes when the price is tanking, it feels like no one loves me. Uh, at that point, I just need to remind myself, it's not necessarily a problem with me. It's just the way the markets work, Molly. And uh, to answer your question about what makes me really strong, uh, that's the hash rate and the nodes of the network. Uh, so the more computers that are securing my ledger, and the more decentralized those are, the more my muscles get big, of course. And I can start doing really cool things like flying and picking up large objects and, and beating up the bad guys. Poor things. So, does anything else affect your strength then? The market cap, maybe um, institutional investor adoption, things like that? Well, like I said, uh, that stuff just kind of goes to my head. I, I think the core fundamentals of my strength are, are the hash rate of the network. And uh, assuming the price goes up, uh, then there will be more miners anyway. So they, they kind of correlate in, in, in that fashion, Molly. So you've mentioned that you can fly, but why don't you tell us more about some of the weapons that your, you know, as of yet unknown father gave you back in episode two. Whoa, thanks, Dad. Oh, boy. Yeah, so uh, the weapons, uh, th these are when the developers uh, work on my code and give me upgrades. Um, so the developers are kind of like uh, Q in James Bond, if you've ever seen that character. He, he always comes along and gives James uh, really cool pens and shoes that blow up. So uh, the, when the developers upgrade my code, I get new fancy things to, to defeat my enemies. So is an example of that something like Segwit? Yeah, uh, a segment uh, comes into the show uh, uh, pretty soon, but again, the, the producers are giving me sidelong glances, and I'm not allowed to talk too much about it. So, now let's talk a little bit more about Metallic. Hmm, interesting. One of your close friends on the show. Are you ever going to be able to let him, you know, more closely into your life in the future? Well, Metallic sure is trying to, to win my love. Um, and again, the producers are looking at me, so I'm not entirely sure what I can say. But I will say that um, uh, Metallica is going to have a hard time getting into my ports. Um, he has to live vicariously through, through something else. And that's the Ethereum character that, that he makes and gets to fall in love with me. Oh, okay. So that was another thing I, I wanted to ask. How do you feel about the possibility of hanging out with other altcoins, you know, in Ethereum, maybe even a Bitcoin Cash. Do you guys get along? Well, uh, and naturally, Molly, I'm the coolest of the bunch, um, but with my network effect and hash rate and all that stuff. Uh, but I think that if a project has good intentions and, uh, you know, is truly decentralized, 
and is trying to bring freedom into the world, uh, then I'm on their team too. I think sometimes when people are, are mean to each other, uh, they're talking with their pocketbooks instead of looking at the bigger picture, of course. So how do you feel, um, so how do you feel in particular about your different hard forks? What is it like when you, when you hard fork? Well, I will say it does feel a little funny when the process happens, uh, but what I, I, I'll say is I think forking is kind of cool. Uh, because uh, for the first time in history, uh, in the history of money, uh, uh, people can choose which currencies they believe in. And I think choices are really cool because, you know, we, we don't have choices. If we don't have choices, then we don't have freedom. So what would you say to someone that doesn't believe in you? You know, a traditional banker will say to you that you can never be defeated by the U.S. dollar. What's your, what's your response to that? Well, uh, my, my first reaction, Molly, is to tell them, to, uh, well, I want to tell them to go suck on a full node, uh, but the producers feel that this is antagonistic, uh, so I think the best approach is to have an honest intellectual debate, you know, about what money is. How would you respond to someone from the banking world, you know, the big banks, that insist that the dollar, you know, like the dollar bot will always be stronger than you? <laughs> Uh, well, I think uh, centralized systems uh, often have a, a very select few who control the issuance of, of money, a and that's not a good thing, because if history has taught us one thing, it's uh, humans can't be trusted, Molly. Now, I, I trust you, of course, Molly, uh, but general speaking, generally speaking, of course. Um, I, but I will say I'm better than the dollar bot uh, because I'm actually scarce and, and you can own and control my itty bitties, you know, without, without having to trust anyone. So it's all about trust. Yeah, because you can't trust humans, of course, but you can trust me. A big theme on the show is drug use with the mention of the Silk Road and then you yourself ingesting a very large amount of drugs. So what could you tell viewers that are worried that Bitcoin equals drugs equals black market? Well, uh, as you know, uh, early in my history, I had a reputation of being used predominantly for nefarious activities, as you suggest, drugs. To feel no more pain, I must do cocaine. And um, I think what's important to remember, Molly, is that I'm a tool. And um, tools can be used for many different things. You know, murderers wear shoes, for example, but, but that doesn't mean we should outlaw shoes, of course. So I, I think that people need to look at, at the bigger picture and not get caught up and, and not get caught up on what certain, uh, you know, bad people are doing with me. So Bitcoin. As you definitely know, there is a potential competitor that will be coming out in 2020 called Libra, which is Facebook's coin. How do you feel about working with Facebook's coin? Do you feel animosity towards Facebook's coin? Well, uh, th thanks for asking that, Molly. I, I will say that obviously I can't see into the future. But uh, uh, what I do think that the Libra coin will do is, is introduce more people to the ideas of cryptocurrencies as a whole. So I, I, I'm kind of hoping that the Libra will be a, a sort of like a, a, a gateway drug uh, to getting into really, truly decentralized uh, projects like myself, of course. So the title of your show, of which you are the star, is Bitcoin and Friends. But how does one become friends with Bitcoin? Well, uh, that's a good question. Um, I really like ice cream, so if you purchase me, you know, if you buy me ice cream, uh, I'll definitely be more likely to like you. Uh, but I guess it, 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 to, be a, uh, to be one of my friends, I think you just need to be a good person and, and, to, and, and to really have other people's best interests at heart. You know, I, I'm trying to make the world a better place, and if you can help me, you know, along in my journey... Uh, then I think we'll be really good friends. I mean, it sounds like a plan to me. So, Bitcoin, in the beginning you mentioned you were a little nervous talking to girls, but do you have maybe a possible girlfriend or love interest? Oh, uh, most certainly. Uh, again, the producers are giving me sidelong glances, uh, but I, I think I've, I've said it a little bit on the show already. I do have a love interest, and that's Ethereum. And um, at some point, uh, in, you know, we'll fall in love and, and there will be atomic swaps on the show, uh, which is, is sort, sort of us, uh, you know, having intercourse in, in our coin sphere. Uh, 
And, um, yeah, it, so I, I lost my virginity on the show um, on camera, which was a little weird. Yeah, it sounds really weird, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to watching it. Does YouTube allow that kind of, you know, graphic content coming from uh, Bitcoin? Well, Molly, if, if YouTube does actually have a problem with me losing my virginity on the show, um, uh, we'll probably just use those sensor blocks uh, over the intimate ports. It makes sense. Although there's no censorship on the blockchain, but there is on YouTube. That's true, and, and that's why the blockchain's better. All right. Well, uh, Molly, I, I hate to cut this short, uh, uh, but the producers are kind of aggressively whispering to, to me uh, from across the room that, that I need to get back on set. Uh, you know, we're right in the middle of filming episode three, of course. So uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to take off. Yeah, of course. I'm so glad you, you know, carved out the time to talk with us today. Oh, no problem. I do have a busy schedule, but uh, anything for you, Molly. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All righty. Bye, Molly. Bye, Bitcoin. Coin Telegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.